just let's see if it stays out of the way. It's driving me. It's just like stop, stop here, stop. <laughs> so, <clears throat> ooh, voice is cracking. Um, since I did my video where I read from the diagnostic criteria of about autism, people have had some questions regarding some of the things mentioned in that video and some of the medical terminology. And so I thought maybe it could be useful if I go through some of these common medical terms that people will hear over and over again and just break them down into plain English uh, as best I can, just based on my own personal experience and what these things you know, can look like for me um, and just my experience with it. Uh, like I said, I'm not a doctor. Not a doctor. Uh, but the first, the first, uh, and, and so if you think this is a good idea or you want to see me do more of these, uh, give me a thumbs up so I'll know and I might do more of these. Uh, but the first one that we're going to try talking about is echolalia because I did mention this in the video where I was talking about the medical terminology uh, for autism. And I will first explain what this is for me. Uh, so often you know, someone will say something to me or I will hear something and I will repeat it back. Most of the time I will repeat it back with the same rhythm and tonality of that I heard this in. So if it's a, I, it can be a spoken word or two, it can be a whole sentence, it can be a sound that I like sometimes. Uh, and the problem sometimes is people think I'm mocking them. And there are usually two reasons I'll actually do this, so I think it's a good thing to explain so people know that I'm not mocking you. Nobody, I'm not mocking anyone, and I don't think anyone's trying to mock anyone else when they do this. <laughs> so we'll unpack the, the, the misunderstanding there. Um, the first reason a lot of times, and this is more when I'm relaxed, is because I like the sound I've just heard or the way someone has said a word. It just struck me in a way that was pleasurable and I want to hear it again. Because when I am repeating something back, it's replaying it in my mind like a tape recorder. Uh, it's the same thing when I sing songs out loud, off key. I'm replaying it back in my mind. Uh, so if I am not doing this because I need more time to process information or if I'm not doing this to try and make sense of something I've just heard, I'm likely doing this for the pleasure of it. <laughs> if that sounds weird, but it's like, um, it's often I really love the way someone said something or I really like that sound. So that's why. So you should be, you know, it, it should be, it's, it should be, it should be flattering. Uh, it's, it's not mocking, um, if that makes sense. And then the other thing is, you know, for communication. It's a communication tool, I guess, for me. And I'm going to try and explain that too. Um, like I was saying, you know, sometimes if I repeat back a whole sentence, it's giving me time to like, really think through what was said and formulate my response. Also to check for understanding and make sure I've heard correctly. Sometimes, for whatever reason, when someone's talking to me, especially if it's in a really loud or busy place, I have a hard time making out all of the words that are coming at me. And I am pretty good with context clues, but sometimes I will just hear something and it will have the completely wrong word or there will just be words missing and I just have to make sense of it. And if it doesn't quickly make sense based on the rest of the conversation, I may repeat the sentence back. And then usually people will correct you if you repeat them back incorrectly. Um, and it's a good way to check for understanding or check that you heard someone correctly. Um, so there's that. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, um, but I mean, just how this plays in uh, to my daily life and my everyday life is 
you know, when I'm relaxed and with people I'm close to, I've got, you know, a few close friends and family. I typically just randomly use so- sounds and in conversation or make funny noises and I will burst into song. I sing song things a lot. I make up little songs constantly. Um, it's just all these little, little things that are just part, natural parts of my communication when I just relax and in myself um, that have just always kind of been part of me. Um, I can turn it all off sometimes. I can't, no, I can turn it off. I can turn it off because I turn it off when I go to work. You know, there's my home self and my work self. And when I was in school, there was my school self and my home self. Um, And work me is very professional and different (laughs) than home me. Um, And it's not even like, I don't know, it's not even conscious at this point. It's just like a switch. Uh, But it's just tiring sometimes, not just being yourself. And I am, I don't know, I think I can be kind of fun and silly and goofy. And uh, I really enjoy these things. And, you know, one someone said to me before I was diagnosed, uh, they said, you just like the sound of your own voice, don't you? And I didn't really know, like, what to make of that. And I was kind of off put by that observation back then and now like thinking back on everything and really paying attention to myself and what I'm doing and I am more inclined to agree yeah um I kind of I like the sound of my own voice but not in the way I think they intended you know I like I guess I'm I'm I seek sounds I like sounds I like music and it's just something that I, I, I seek and I can stimulate my senses with my own voice by making funny sounds and funny voices and I enjoy the heck out of it. And that's just my very um, plain English personal experience uh, explanation of echolalia. So yeah, like I said, give me a thumbs up and share this video if you think this is helpful at all. Let me know your experiences with this. If you do this in comments, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, like I said, if we, if we, if we like this, I'll do more. I'll do more of them. So anyway, guys, I will talk to you next week. Bye.